Hello, I'm Robin Williams. I'm an interventional radiologist at the Freeman Hospital in Newcastle. I'm going to take you through a simulated deployment of a Medtronic Endurant 2 stent graft on a 3D system simulator for a lady with an aortic aneurysm. The patient has a 5.5 centimetre infrarenal aortic aneurysm. We have a CT of the aneurysm of 3D reconstruction. So we're now going to deploy a Medtronic Endurant 2 stent graft into this aneurysm. We're going to start off by putting standard J-tip wires into both groins. So we'll start with the right side. And we'll park the tip of that in the abdominal aorta and just recenter. And now we'll put a similar wire up the left hand side. So we have safe bilateral femoral access. We now need to change the left hand wire for a stiff wire that's capable of taking the Medtronic introduction system. So to do that, we're going to pass a caster over the J-tip wire. We'll just use the pigtail catheter for this. We're placing the main body up the left hand side just because the anatomy is better for a left main body introduction. So we'll see the pigtail catheter come now. We'll let the pigtail form and then we'll advance the two together into the thoracic aorta. This is a very safe way of introducing a stiff guide wire. So we'll remove the J wire and we'll replace it with a Lundquist wire. And remove the pigtail catheter, leaving the Lundquist with the tip just in the distal arch. remove that caster. We'll recenter over the abdominal aorta. And now we're going to place a pigtail caster in the contralateral side, which is in this case is the right. So we'll place the curl of the pigtail just above the renal arteries and the renal arteries are typically at the L12 disc space and we remove the J-tip wire. So now we have to introduce the main body. So this is the Medtronic Endurant 2 Stentcraft delivery system. We're going to place this over the Lundquist wire. In via the left groin. Now this is a 26 millimeter aortic lumen. So we're going to introduce a 32 millimeter diameter Stent graft, 32 millimetres is 20% oversize, which is within IFU for the Medtronic system. Uh, this is a 166 millimetre long, uh, two-piece system, and a 20 millimetre distal ipsilateral limb. We need to correct for the rotation, so we need the contralateral limb gate to open up towards the patient's right-hand side. On the screen you can see it pointing to the left and we're now going to rotate it through 180 degrees now so the contralateral limb is pointing to the patient's right. And now it's time to do an angiogram and typically for an EVAR tend to inject about 15 mils of contrast at 15 mils a second that gives a short um, but concentrated burst of contrast to show us the renal arteries.
Okay, and we have a run there. But I don't think that's subtracted. So we need to repeat that. So we'll try that again. Okay, and we need to flip monitors, please. There we go. Okay, so we can now see the subtracted image on the main live monitor. And when we screen, we get a little bit of overlay fade. And you can see the lowest renal artery is the right-hand renal artery. And we can see the covered markings at the proximal end of the stent graft immediately low, below the right renal artery. And we can also just see the iliac bifurcation on the patient's left, and the stent graft will open above that. I think we should probably repeat that run with the um, II centered a little bit more distally. Just to make sure we can view the iliac artery because this is a two-piece system. So we're going to repeat that contrast injection. And there, we get a better view of both the renal artery and the patient's left iliac bifurcation. So we have the graft in a nice position, the rotation's correct, so we can start to deploy the stent graft. We can see the outer sheath coming back and the graft will start to open now. And the key at this point is to keep the graft stable in the correct position until the contralateral limb gate is opened. At this stage we've got blood flow through the graft, so we're now going to release the proximal uh, uncovered stent and we do that by rotating this blue handle at the back following the direction of the arrows and you can see the proximal uncovered stent with the fixation hooks is now open. We take that all the way. Now we can take the overlay off, we're happy with the position and we can fully deploy the main stent graft. That's fully deployed. We now need to remove the delivery system. So to do that, we need to recapture the proximal nose cone. So we're going to advance the system a little bit to take it above the bare metal stent of the main graft. And then we're going to reverse the direction of the little blue handle at the back. And you can see the nose cone is being brought back down and captured, locked into place. Now we can withdraw the whole delivery system a little below the proximal uncovered stent and now we're going to recapture the nose cone and we're going to do that by pulling back on the grey trigger keeping the right hand on the blue handle still and with your left hand pulling the main delivery system backwards. If you've got an assistant at this stage it's useful to get them to advance the guide wire or at least maintain the position of the guide wire and you should pull this all the way back until the two dot together like that. And we'll just then remove the delivery system out of view. So the next step is to catheterize the contralateral limb gate. And we're going to do that via the right hand side. So we're going to remove this pigtail catheter and we're going to remove it over a J-tipped guide wire. So we're going to insert the J-tipped guide wire up through the right groin, through the pigtail caster. And we'll see the pigtail caster straightening out. And then we'll remove the pigtail caster. And we're going to replace the pigtail caster with a very simple shaped caster. Something like a vertebral caster. There are other alternatives that work well. You can also see that we haven't opened the two limbs quite perfectly side by side and to work out the orientation we can just angle the c-arm a little side to side until you see the gate fully open and there we're in a right anterior oblique which means the limb is open slightly posteriorly so we're now going to advance the vertebral caster Remove the J-tip guide wire and we're going to replace it with a, an angled 
terumo hydrophilic wire. And pass that back up through the vertebral catheter and try and access the contralateral limb gate. Ideally you want this side by side or a little bit anterior, so we've made life a little difficult for ourselves here. But hopefully we'll be able to catheterize. And if you can't access the gate with this shape of catheter, we may need to change for something else. You can see the guide wires consistently missing and passing to the sack alongside. It appears to touch something there, so we may be close. There, I think we've now succeeded. It's important to be sure, so we'll advance the catheter into the main body of the stent graft. We will remove the guide wire and we'll do an angiogram with a hand injection in this point at this point. So do a subtracted run and inject. And you can clearly see the stent graft fills, contrast then pours out of the contralateral limb gate into the aneurysm sac. So I'm confident we have catheterized the gate and the guide wire hasn't passed alongside the graft. So we now need to introduce another stiff guide wire to allow us to insert the contralateral limb delivery system. So we'll use another Lundequist wire. We don't need the overlay on the screening. At this stage you need to be very careful as you take the stiff wire up into the thoracic aorta. If you have any doubt, advance the catheter over a softer wire first and then exchange for the stiff wire. We're going to have a look and screen towards the patient's head as we insert this up into the distal aortic arch. And that's far enough. We're now going to centre back over the abdominal aorta. And the important thing now is to identify the iliac bifurcation on this side. So we're going to change the angle. And typically we want to come into a left anterior oblique. I'm going to remove this vertebral catheter and we're going to insert a 16 French sheath into the right groin. 16 French because the outer diameter of the delivery system for, the con for this contralateral limb is 16 French. It varies depending on the size of the limb. So this 16 French sheath gets automatically inserted and then we can see the introducer. We maybe need to advance it. No, the introducer will be removed now. I think we'll cope with it in that position. And what we need to do now is an angiogram via that sheath and identify the iliac bifurcation. So subtracted run. 10 mils of contrast at 5 mils a second. And there we can clearly see the iliac bifurcation. The size of this endurant contralateral limb is 20 millimetres at the distal end in the ceiling zone and 120 millimetres long. So we're going to insert that via the patient's right groin. We can see the markers. You've got the proximal marker, the minimum overlap marker. And because of the angle of the main graft, it's a little difficult to see the bottom end of the contralateral limb, but you can just about see the ring and you can see the minimum overlap marker in place and most importantly at the distal end the distal markers of the limb will not be covering the iliac, um, the internal iliac on the right. So we're now going to keep that in position and just as we deployed the main body we're going to use the blue handle, rotate it round, keeping the graft in a nice position, don't advance or withdraw the delivery system at this point and rotate all the way 
until the graft is completely uncovered. And there, so the graft's fully open. And now we need to recapture the nose cone. We do that by pulling back on the gray trigger, holding the blue handle, keeping your right hand still, and then pulling the nose cone back until the two are docked together. And then we'll withdraw this delivery system out through the sheath. And we need to go to an AP view, please. We're going to recenter the imaging, perhaps apply a little bit of cordocranial angulation to see the proximal end of the stent graft clearly. Withdraw the main body delivery system and then insert a pigtail caster via the, right, via the patient's right groin or left to do the completion angiogram. You can at this stage balloon the proximal or distal seals and the junctions between the graft components. But I only tend to do that if necessary, so I normally do an angiogram before ballooning. So again, insert the pigtail caster with the curl of the pigtail just above the renal artery level there. I'm going to bring the ipsilateral lundequist wire back down into the body of the graft to allow the iliac limbs to form their natural configuration and we'll do the completion angiogram and we'll do the completion angiogram again 15 mils of contrast at 15 mils a second Okay, and there's the completion angiogram showing the main graft deployed just below the lowest right renal artery. We could maybe have gone another one or two millimetres proximally. And you can also see the iliac limbs deployed immediately above of the iliac bifurcation, so both internal iliac arteries are perfused and there is no evidence of an end leak. Thank you.